Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video today, we're going to be taking a look at a very short quote from Buccaneers quarterback Baker Mayfield following their loss versus the Indianapolis Colts. I think it really showcases the frustration with Baker Mayfield and in a way talks about Mayfield's frustration with some of the other guys on the roster, not purely calling guys out, but just talking about how it's the same story every single week and that Baker Mayfield's just going to try and continue to do his job with the best of his abilities. Now, our good friend Rhett Matthew over the Can of Fire podcast had posted this video that was originally posted by Jenna Lane of ESPN. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. And I'm going to go ahead and give my thoughts following the clip. And we're going to play it twice to kind of get the, the overall feel of the quote and, and hear it twice in its entirety because it's very short. It's only 17 seconds. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. It's, it's very frustrating to continue to... I kind of have the same story over and over again, and so and until everybody gets pissed off enough to, to get it fixed, uh, there will there will be no change. So I know where I'm going to head at into this week, and so uh, I'll get I'll get my job fixed and, and try and drag as many people along as well. It's it's very frustrating to continue to I kind of have the same story over and over again, and so and until everybody gets pissed off enough to, to get it fixed, uh, there will there will be no change. So I know where I'm going to head at into this week, and so. Uh, I'll get, I'll get my job fixed and, and try and drag as many people along as well. So I'll try and get my job fixed and drag along as many people as well. First off, that's a very powerful part of the quote. The second most powerful part is until guys get pissed off enough, until guys get upset enough, nothing is going to change. I think that that first, that, that second part there, right? Until guys get upset enough, nothing is going to change, right? And that's accurate. And that's something that we've heard from Todd Bowles in the past. That's something the Bucks fans have been echoing these thoughts from Baker Mayfield in the past as well. It, it is something that is very accurate, right? Until the team is upset enough with losing, things aren't going to change. Because what happens whenever you do get upset enough? You're going to concentrate more. You're going to put in just that little bit of extra effort. And right now, I think a lot of people have agreed that it just seems like something's been off with the execution of this team. To Todd Bull's point, and I do agree with this, it's a different guy every week. It is a mistake from one guy here, a mistake from another guy there that just leads to these critical plays not getting made, be it a negative play happening or a positive play not happening. It's just different things every single week. And so I do agree with Baker Mayfield here. I don't think this is a negative thing from Mayfield. And I think that it shows leadership for him to say, look, I'm going to try and fix my job and I'm going to try and bring along as many guys as I can. That shows leadership, right? And, and it's accountability. This is something that a lot of people want to see out of your quarterback. If you view it as a negative thing, that is what it is. You know, I, you know, I, some people to, to some people, it's a very subjective thing, right? To see it as a negative thing, to see it as, oh, you know what? This is the same thing he did in Cleveland. He called out people in Cleveland and his time ended there. I don't think this is Baker Mayfield being a bad teammate, in my opinion. I don't think this is Baker Mayfield calling out guys without reason or just just being a bad teammate overall. From what I see, I see a guy as a leader who's saying, look, I have things to fix. I'm going to do that. I'm going to try and help out, bring along as many guys as I possibly can as a quarterback, as a leader of this football team. And it's the same story every single week. We're just not executing on enough plays. We're just not getting enough, jo enough of the job done. We're just not concentrating enough. There's a lot to agree with in just 17 seconds here of Baker Mayfield. And again, until guys really make that those steps to make that change. Of course, everybody on the team wants to win, right? Of course, everybody does. But until everybody gets upset enough about losing, until the taste of losing is just so bitter that you just have that extra drive to want to change, nothing's going to change, right? So I do agree with a lot of what Baker Mayfield said here. I think that it is a very leadership-esque quote, in my opinion. I don't view it as a negative thing. I think that it is holding people accountable. I don't think that it is necessarily calling guys out per se. I think it's saying, hey, look, I, me as the quarterback, I'm not happy as winning, or I'm not happy with us losing, going one in six in our past seven games. I want some things to change. I don't know if everybody feels that way. Let's, let's kind of hold some guys accountable here, and maybe that will be the spark 
that causes some change, right? That's kind of the way I take this quote. So it's a very interesting situation here, man, with Baker, with with the quote here. You know, Rhett, Rhett talks on here about how it's calling out the Bucks, And in a way it is, but I think more importantly, he's holding the team accountable. He's holding himself. He's holding his teammates accountable. And that's what you want to see in strong leaders. Point blank, simple as that. A lot of people have been asking, where's the accountability? Where's the leadership? In 17 second clip, you're you're seeing that, right? And that's even in a public setting. We don't know what's being said in the locker room. We don't know what's being said behind closed doors. But I do like that Baker is honest about his opinions in this clip. I do like that Baker is showcasing, in my opinion, leadership qualities in this clip as well. Uh, one also thing I wanted to talk about is just real quick before we end this video, a lot of people have been talking I've seen a lot of comments about the roster of the Bucks and, and how this roster isn't talented right now and that so many different things have changed. And, and I wanted to take a look at the 2020 roster of the Bucks and, and talk about how much that's changed real quick before we, we end off this video. Obviously, Tom Brady isn't around anymore. Ronald Jones has been replaced by Rashad White. Scotty Miller has been replaced by, at first it was Russell Gage, but then it turned into Trey Palmer and a few other guys in that mix. Rakeem Jarrett was in there. You had... A couple of other different guys in there. Rob Gronkowski has been replaced. Donovan Smith is replaced by Tristan Wirfs. Ali Marpet is gone. He was replaced by Matt Filer. Ryan Jensen was replaced by Robert Hainsey. You have Alex Kappa, who was replaced by Cody Mock. Tristan Wirfs, technically replaced by Luke Gedeke, but same thing still kind of stands. And Dominican Sue was replaced by Logan Hall. Rakeem Nunez Rochez, I mean, that one's kind of like an iffy thing because. Vita Vea was working on, he was injured. Will Golston's actually still technically there, so I don't I don't need him highlighted. But Jason Pierre-Paul was replaced by Joe Tryon Showinka. Technically, Sean Murphy Bunting was replaced by Jamel, but I don't even I don't even really need to have this one because again, much like in the case of uh Raquel Nunez Rochez, um, their starter was hurt. So the guy who is their starter um is is still there. It's just that Sean Murphy Bunting was filling in due to injury. So Whenever you look, and I do want to talk about this, because I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, the expectations should have been different because the overall talent of the team has declined so, so much. And I will say, on the offense, that is something that you can certainly say, right? Look at all these different things that have changed. Literally, most of the starters on offense have changed. But I think what's really interesting is that you really don't have much change on defense. Like, if Rakeem Nunez, like, let's assume that Vita Vea is healthy. He's there instead of Rakeem Nunez Rochez. He's still there. Um, Shaq Barrett, Levante David, Devin White are all still there. Carlton Davis is still there. If Sean Murphy Bunting wasn't here, sorry, if Sean Murphy Bunting wasn't here, it would have been Jamel Dean. He's still here. You only have three new starters on the defensive side of things. That's just something I kind of wanted to point out is that, you know, defensively, a lot of the starters are still here, man, if you really break it down and you really think about it. Uh, just something I kind of wanted to cover and give my thoughts and opinions about. Offense, yes. The offense, it, a lot of new starters. But you also look at the guys who have replaced them. Like, Tristan Wirfs is in at left tackle over Donovan Smith. Is that really a bad replacement? Left guard, interior offensive line, absolutely, I agree. That's been tough, right? I think I think Luke Gedeke's honestly held his own at right tackle pretty darn well. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are still there. Rashad White's in for Ronald Jones. Um, so I, I just kind of wanted to take a look at that real quick because a lot of people have have talked about the idea of, well, you know, it's it's the rosters the roster stinks, but it, it, compared to the 2020 Super Bowl roster, and and obviously um, Antonio Brown was in there as well, but at least in terms of defensive stuff offensively you can certainly say that but defensively not much has really changed guys i just kind of wanted to make a note of that just to give uh, just kind of put that into perspective of three defensive starters have only changed in the past couple of years and that's kind of the unit besides maybe some guys on offense that's kind of the unit that a lot of people have been criticizing lately in terms of lack of concentration lack of just making plays here making plays there and it's important to remember that a lot of the same starters are still on that defense. So, I mean, you know, Jordan Whitehead, Jason Pierre-Paul, and Dominican Sue, uh, unless those guys are all Hall of Fame caliber players, um, doesn't seem like you've lost every single starter on the defense that was a part of that Super Bowl team. So it's kind of an important thing to make it and make a note of there. I think a lot of guys have been playing down this year 
certainly been playing down. And this is where, again, I go back to it. This is where accountability is so important. This is where I think that leadership of guys like Baker Mayfield is so important in this situation. So let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions about this down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. As always, guys, I'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now and go Bucks.